After installing the Apple Toolsize extension for Selenium IDE, you should see an icon for it in the navbar in your browser next to the icon for Selenium IDE. When we click it open, if the IDE is not already open, it will prompt us to make sure that it is. So let's go ahead and open that, and then click back into the extension. Now it prompts us for our API key in Apple Tools Eyes, and we can get that from the Test Manager dashboard in the top right-hand portion of the screen under My API Key. Let's go ahead and copy this, and we will paste it into the form, and then click Apply. When it's all said and done, it will say Successfully Connected with Selenium IDE. There are some additional options here, which I'll cover in a little bit, but for right now, we're all set to hop over to the IDE and start updating an existing test or author new tests with visual testing commands. So let's go ahead and hop over to the IDE and see what we're working with. We have a suite of smoke tests that were pre-recorded, and these are used to test an open source web app called the Internet. The testing question that we're going to work with here and update is the submit test. And what it does is it visits a login form, this login form, and it completes it and submits it. So let's go ahead and add some visual testing commands. And there are two ways that we can add visual testing commands to this test. We could either do it manually by right-clicking and inserting new command, and then filling in the command target and value input fields uh, in this section of the screen. Or we can use the record functionality within the IDE. And you can start that by clicking Start Recording right here. And then once we do that, we can hop over to the extension, and it will list out all of the available commands to us for visual testing. We're going to pay attention to three commands in particular, check window, check element, and set viewport size. And we're going to start with set viewport size because it is an important command. It is required for every visual test since it's used to determine the layout of your app and its elements. So let's go ahead and add that command. And from this window, we can click the command that we want to add, and it will add the command above the currently selected command in the IDE. I'm going to go ahead and actually update this value. Now what this value is, is the viewport resolution size uh, in terms of width times height that we want uh, the browser to operate in when running the test. Now let's go ahead and turn our attention to the check element command. And what this is going to enable us to do is focus on a specific element on the page and uh, do a visual check of just that element. And when we select from the menu here, it's going to enable an interactive mode uh, within the IDE to select the locator on the page that we want to target. Just like with the previous command, uh, when we click from the window here, it will add it to our test just before the currently selected command in the IDE. And the difference, as I mentioned, is the interactive mode that when we go ahead and hover over an element, it will show us visually in the page what we're targeting. And when we select an element, it will add that locator to our test. So let's go ahead and choose the login form. And you can see it populated the command value for the target here of id equals login. Alternative to the interactive mode, you could always inspect the page, look at the markup, and find a locator, and input it by hand in the target field as well. Um, additionally, the check element command, besides a locator, it takes a value. And if we hop into the reference tab, we can see that it takes a step name. And so what this is, is a semantic name to display in the test results. Um, it's optional, so if one is not provided, it will actually default to the URL of the page that was currently visited in the test. And so let's go ahead and give this a name. And since this is the login form, let's just call it login. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate adding the final command, the check window command, uh, manually. And we'll go ahead and add it at the end of the test after we have uh, submitted the form. So we'll go ahead and insert, insert command. And just like with clicking from the extension window, it will add a command just before the currently selected one. And we'll go ahead and type out check window. And we can see down here in the reference tab, it populates all the information about it as well. And this takes an optional argument similar to check element of a semantic name. And this is to check that we have successfully logged in. So that's everything that we need uh, in terms of adding these commands. So we can actually go ahead and run this test. And we can do that just by clicking Run Current Test. And then we can hop over to the Log tab. And we can see that it's connecting to Apple Tools Eyes, performing a check window, and check element. And the test failed. And actually, a few things just happened here. Um, in the output, we can see that diffs were found in the visual tests. And here is the resulting link. And it will this link will take us to the test dashboard. Also by default, the behavior in the extension is to open the test dashboard after a test runs.
And also there's two more things. Um, aside from the obvious red failure indicator here, um, the test was updated to call out which uh, step in the test actually resulted in the failure. And if we hop over to the test result and look at the result image for that step for the check window of logged in, and we can actually do a couple of things. We can highlight the differences, which shows us a radar view of what changed, and toggle it as well with the baseline image. And in this case, we can see that there is a change within the success message on the page. It looks as though the background color was changed from green to white. And the interesting thing about this is that if we took out the visual checks, this test would pass uh, because all that this assertion was doing before uh, was just checking that the element was on the page, which it was. And so it would have hidden this issue uh, and the test would have passed. A couple more things. I did mention that we would step through the settings that are listed here in this part of the extension window. Let's go ahead and click open settings and it lists a few tabs. Under the test tab, there is the option to disable visual checkpoints. Um, this, is, this enables you to toggle the checkpoints on and off without having to remove those lines from your tests. Uh, also, the default behavior of the test manager being open after a test runs, um, you can change that here. And you also have access to leverage Apple Tools Eyes's um, branching functionality, which is quite powerful. So do check out the documentation about that if you're interested. And under the account tab, you have the ability to add or update your API key, as well as specify a server URL, which is useful if you have a dedicated cloud or on-prem instance of Apple Tools Eyes. And the last thing I want to mention is that in addition to being able to playback tests within the IDE, um, there is also an alternative option. Uh, there is a command line runner for Selenium IDE. So you could take your suite of tests, save them, and then use this command line runner to run them in parallel uh, and wire them up to continuous integration. And this runner handles parallel execution and thread safety for you. And it's quite a powerful uh, way to take what you have in Selenium IDE and leverage it within your development workflow. Uh, so that's it. I hope that you use the tool and give us feedback and look forward to seeing how the community embraces this integration. Thanks.